Good morning, everybody. My name is Brian. And I'm Allison. And we are here coming to you from Stone Zoo for today's Zoo to You, which is brought to you by the U Fund College Investing Plan and MIFA. So thank you to those guys. And we are here in the prehensile tailed porcupine exhibit. Hopefully you can see my good friend here. This is Shadow, and it looks like he's looking for a tasty treat with that big nose of his. I've got some of his favorite right here. This is some sweet potato. Shadow here, as I said, is a prehensile tailed porcupine, and he is one of my favorite animals for a ton of different reasons. Um, now, one of those reasons, as I mentioned before, is his really big nose. I think it's just absolutely adorable. And that's going to be the main way that Shadow finds the delicious food that he loves to eat. Here at the zoo, he likes to eat sweet potatoes, but out in the wilds of South America where these guys live, they will eat a whole bunch of different fruits and vegetables. These guys are technically omnivores, so they do eat um, both meat and vegetables, but they eat a majority of vegetables. They are mostly vegetarians, I guess you can say. And here at the zoo, they're almost exclusively vegetarians. Um, these guys are rodents, so if you get a good peek at Shadow's mouth, you might see some very large front teeth. They kind of look like beaver teeth, almost. Beavers are also another species of rodent that we actually have in, these, in this area around Massachusetts. His teeth are a little different than beaver teeth. They're a little smaller, and they're not built to chew on wood, but they are built to chew on a lot of different types of food that Shadow likes to eat. Rodent teeth are very special because they continually grow throughout their life, um, so that's why they're so big. Um, they're also a nice orangey color because they have naturally occurring iron in their teeth. That makes them nice and strong so they can gnaw on pretty much anything, and they actually need to keep gnawing throughout their lives. Um, that helps wear those teeth down so they don't get too big. We can talk about that a little more in a bit when we get on to how we enrich these guys. But for now, we can talk about another really cool adaptation that I'm sure most people think about when they hear porcupines, and that is their amazing quills all over their body. You can see shadows covered in them. They are black and white in color, and they're on almost every inch of his body. A few spots don't have them, like his nose and his stomach, um, but they're almost everywhere else. Those quills are pretty well known, but I don't think most people know that they're actually a modified type of hair. So they are hollow hair follicles, or hollow hair pieces kind of, they're made of the same stuff, they're made of keratin, and that hollow uh, form gives them more rigidity so they stick out straight. That can allow Shadow to keep himself safe. If he feels really threatened, what he'll do is he'll stick all those quills out, it'll make him look really big and kind of puffy, and anything that comes near him is going to be at risk of being stuck by one of those quills. And when they stick in, they are very painful, and they're actually very hard to pull out because they have little microscopic barbs on them that face backwards. So they're very tough to pull out, and it's very painful when they do get stuck in. At least I've heard. I've thankfully never gotten quilled by shadow here. Different types of porcupines have different types of quills. Um, we have North American porcupines here in Massachusetts, which have longer quills, but they're kind of mixed in with hair. They also live here at the Stone Zoo, so if you ever get a chance to come by, you can hopefully see those ones too. Um, these guys are covered in sort of shorter quills, and then there's the porcupines that live in Africa that have much longer black and white striped quills. We'll see if Shadow's going to enjoy another piece of sweet potato. As I said, it is his favorite. Another really cool adaptation Shadow has is his prehensile tail, right in his name. Hopefully we can get a pretty good shot of it grasping onto that tree branch. Prehensile actually means that it functions sort of like another hand. So right there, Shadow's demonstrating really well. He can use it to hold onto the tree branch and keep himself kind of safe and secure high up in the trees. These guys are pretty much exclusively tree dwellers. As I mentioned, they live in South America, um, so they like to live in the trees where it's nice and safe for them to be. His feet and hands also work as climbing instruments really well. You can see he's currently using his hands to hold on to some sweet potato, but I'm sure you can just imagine if that was a small branch, he would have no trouble holding on to that. His back feet also have kind of squishy pads on them, give him a really good grip, and they have very long claws, which also work well at holding on to any branches he needs. These guys are nimble in the trees. They can move around quickly and easily. And 
it's their home. That's where they like to be, as you can see from their enclosure. They got tons of climbing structure to move around on. We'll see if Shadow will stand up for us. You can see his quills on his belly. They're a little bit smaller than the ones on his back. Oh, he's just going to grab it right from me. Shadow also has some kind of small eyes you might have noticed. A very large nose and small eyes is generally an indication that he has a good sense of smell, but not so great eyesight. These guys are technically nocturnal, so they're usually awake during the nighttime. Again, Shadow here, totally happy to wake up for some sweet potato. Um, and here we got a little bit more of his diet. We have some apple and lettuce and I think some collard greens. You might also see some uh, biscuit looking foods. Oh, it looks like he's gonna take some lettuce, awesome. Healthy eater today, Shadow. Um, we also have some, these are called, um, are these monkey chow or? These are leaf eater biscuits. Um, so this is kind of like a dog food, you can almost think of it, but it's made specifically for stuff that eats plants. Um, so I'm not sure if Shadow likes them too much, but he does like other, <laughs> yeah, so he'll eat them a little bit, but it seems like today he's preferring his healthy foods. I can also turn you guys over to Allison now to hopefully talk a little bit about how these guys get enrichment and a little bit about what we do every day to keep them entertained and mentally stimulated. So good morning, everybody. So we can see that Shadow has just been chowing down on his favorite foods here. And using food and feeding our animals in different ways is a form of enrichment, which just means we give them an experience that's a little bit different every day, so it keeps them stimulated, and we try to get them to mimic their natural behaviors. So for porcupines like this, it would be kind of foraging for food and maybe climbing to reach those leaves that they want. So we use a couple different mechanisms to stimulate those behaviors. And I've been working with the PT porcupines here for about six weeks and trying different things to see what might work as enrichment and what also what doesn't work as enrichment because every animal is different. So one thing that I found and I'm hoping Shadow might show us here are these what I call, we, these are basically kebab feeders. So you can use these kind of feeders for any small animals. We use them with rabbits and some of our birds. Um, but we can hook up a feeder and see if Shadow, well, maybe when he's done with that piece of lettuce, is a little bit interested in reaching over. I have found that they really do like these kebab feeders. Um, and it's just a different way to present their food and different, you know, requires them to climb and grab a little bit more. And while Shadow is still chewing, what do you think, Shadow? Sometimes we have to get their attention, like, cause like Brian said, they don't have very good eyesight. I didn't really have time to chain this very well, so I'm just going to hold it, but you can see, oh, there he goes. He's investigating, oh, a little romaine lettuce. <laughs> I don't know if the camera is, if the microphone is picking up shadows crunching. Of course, it's harder to hear the lettuce than something like a sweet potato, but I think he'll get to that in a minute. So also a great shot of his, of his teeth there. Hi, Shadow. <laughs> Actually, Brian, maybe I can get you to hold on to this feeder for me. We'll switch hands, and we can switch places for a second. And I'm going to grab a couple other things we use for enrichment. I can show you things that have worked and things that have not worked. <laughs> Look at Shadow's belly there. So another thing that um, Brian may not have mentioned, but if you can see that he's got basically just hair on his belly, but when baby porcupines are born, called porcupets, prehensile tail porcupets actually are born with just hair because you can imagine what it would be for mom if they had fully formed quills at birth. And then in just about a week or so, their hair starts hardening into quills. But it, they look like basically red-headed little squirrels when they're born. 
So this is another kind of what we would call a feeder ball, where you can see it has holes in it, and sometimes you can stick food in it. Now with animals that use their hands, basically, to forage for food, this is a good option. So you might see this hanging in our gibbon exhibit or for our colobus monkeys. But I have found if I didn't stick sweet potatoes and have them protruding from the holes very well, Shadow didn't really get the hang of this one because he uses basically his head to forage for food. I also tried, we do a lot of uh, enrichment with recycled materials here or upcycled materials. Things like egg cartons, paper towel rolls, cardboard boxes, anything we can do to present their diet in a different way. And I tried to make an enrichment feeder. <laughs> Good job, Shadow, out of one of those square tissue boxes. And that didn't go so well because Shadow basically got his head stuck right in the hole. <laughs> so he said, we won't try that again because he wasn't using his hands. He was using his face first. What do you think, Shadow? Are you still ready to eat? Maybe we'll hold this up for you. Yep. Can you also tell us a little bit more? We haven't really mentioned prickles too much over here. <laughs> well, prickles, if you haven't noticed, is the grand champion at the game of statue. So <laughs> prickles is Shadow's girlfriend. They are a breeding pair here at the zoo. And unlike Shadow, who is an education program animal, Prickles is not, so she is a little bit kind of weirded out by the fact that there are three people in her exhibit right now. So earlier this morning, she did actually eat <laughs> a few pieces of her food, but she's sort of, you know, in a defense mode where she's going to be as still as possible. So maybe those predators that she might perceive as as predators, you know, maybe we pretend we don't even see her. But she's doing pretty well over there. She's just. Again, grand champion at the game of statue. Have Shadow and Prickles had any porky pets? They have. So if you were visited the zoo in the last couple years, they did have a little porky pet named Pineapple. Um, and Pineapple doesn't live at our zoo anymore, but Pineapple was uh, the cutest little red-haired porcupine you could possibly see. But we are hoping, and everybody should cross their fingers, that we might have another porky pet. What do you think, Shadow? Are you going to help us out with that? Are there any other questions that have come through, Jen? Yeah, so Katie was wondering if we do any training with Shadow. Oh, well, you know, the, the right person is in the room right now because Brian, I'll hand this off to Brian, he is one of Shadow's trainers. Thank you very much, Katie, for that fantastic question. We do a bit of training with Shadow here. As Allison mentioned, he is one of our program animals. Um, so we do occasionally bring him out to programs at schools or on zoo grounds so we can kind of talk about him live to people that come to the zoo. Um, and what we need to do to get him used to that is a lot of training. So Shadow here is what we call crate trained, which means he is willing to go into or come out of a crate. You can think of kind of a dog or cat crate that you might use to bring your pets to the vet. Um, so he is trained to go into those because as I mentioned before, him being a porcupine, we can't just kind of pick him up and bring him where he wants to go or where we want him to go because that wouldn't be too much fun for us. Um, so we need him to do that completely voluntarily, all on his own. He has his own special crate. It smells like him, which is a very strong smell, kind of like body odor mixed with like greasy fast food. It's not the best smell in the world, um, but his crate is special and it is his own, and he is trained to go right in it when we ask and then come out of it when we need him to. Um, he's uh, also trained to sit very politely on a perch, um, that's how we kind of present him out in areas that aren't his own exhibit. And he's very, he's usually very happy to kind of sit on that perch and just eat as much sweet potato as we have at the time. Um, he's also pretty well accustomed to loud noises. You might have heard some in the background. Some of his next door neighbors are very noisy birds, including some macaws. Um, so he's accustomed to loud noises, both from them, but also from some audience members. Sometimes people at the zoo get really excited and they make some loud noises. Shadow is an absolute superstar, though. He's pretty much unfazed. Um, as long as he's got that sweet potato in his hand, he's happy to do whatever we need of him. Prickles, as Allison mentioned, not exactly trained. Um, she uh, came here after Shadow did to kind of be a partner for him. 
Um, and as Allison mentioned, they've been great at that and they've had a baby hopefully more on the way. Um, but Shadow here is very well trained. Again, fantastic question from Katie. I'd, I'd just like to mention one thing we are training Prickles on. You see how Shadow just stood for that, uh, for that piece of sweet potato and how he's sitting right now? We are training Prickles. She will also stand when there's no one else in the room. She will stand for food. And if we are able to gently touch her belly, that will make it easier for if a time comes when she is pregnant, if we need to do an ultrasound to conf either confirm a pregnancy or see how things are going, it will be less stressful for her to be wanded with that ultrasound. So that is one thing we are working on with Prickles. All right, we had another question come through from Stacy, um, wondering how old our porcupines are. Great question, Stacy. So Shadow, the porcupine we're looking at right now, is an eight-year-old male, and his girlfriend, Prickles in the corner over here, is nine years old. That's roughly middle age for porcupines. They can live about 15 to 20 years usually. Um, so hopefully they've got a lot more time here at the Stone Zoo with these guys. And uh, Isa, I believe, is asking, are these the North American porcupines? That is a great question. We do have two different species of porcupines here at the Stone Zoo. These are actually our prehensile tailed porcupines. Um, the North American porcupines we have live outside because they're actually found in this region of Massachusetts. They can be found in the cold weather. They have a lot of thick fur that they can use to stay warm throughout the winter. These guys, however, are mostly just quills, which are great for defense, but not very good for insulation. So these guys can't take the cold temperatures. Or today it was about eight degrees outside when we got to the zoo. Shadow would not be having fun in that weather. Um, but our North American porcupines, they live outside year round. They don't mind it whatsoever because they got nice, nice big fluffy coat on them. Um, so that's one way you can tell them apart. North American porcupines are a little more brown, whereas these prehensile tailed ones have that long thin tail that they use to hold onto branches and their quills are mostly black and white. Rachel wanted to know if porcupines are nocturnal. Great question, Rachel. You might have noticed they're very small eyes. So these guys don't rely on their eyesight very much, and that is exactly because they are nocturnal. Um, so Shadow's got that big, cute nose. He has a great sense of smell, and smell is not at all impeded by darkness. So he can still smell his food when it's dark outside, and he can find those sweet potatoes that he loves so much. These guys are absolutely nocturnal. Um, they often move around a lot at night. Sometimes we come in the next morning and they've made a big mess of the exhibit, but we just know that means they had a good time. Uh, and I actually have some questions for Allison sure. about some of their enrichment that you were telling us about. Sure. Um, so we talked a lot about just food enrichment. Um, do they like anything else like scents or sounds or anything like that? So they do. So actually what I have here, I know you probably can't read it on the camera, but for all of our species that get enrichment, we have what's called an enrichment calendar. And there's actually a committee here that works on enrichment for all the different animals and uh, the different forms of enrichment that would be appropriate for each animal. So what we do is we tend to look at this chart and say, all right, what do we have today? So we have things like half a sweet potato on a kebab. I showed you that kebab feeder. Or we have browse sticks and we use the word browse it kind of means basically clippings from trees that we actually even find around the zoo so we find one that's appropriate for the porcupines and we might bring it in and it gives them something different tactile to use we have a new log oh a shavings pile a lot of animals this might sound a little bit gross but like to smell the shavings that another animal has used, particularly our carnivores. They kind of like to roll around in some of the agouti straw that we get, or even the PT porcupine straw. All right, and what else do we have? We have um, a whole carrot, a scatter feed. So again, feeding in different locations. Um, let's see, from our, some of our other animals, like our birds, you might have heard some of those macaws or even our rhino hornbills in the background. Uh, they get auditory, so different kinds of music. Some of our primates also get music. Um, and we have different other kinds of things I can show you. So we have a couple other different things here. So this ball, 
would not be appropriate for our PT porcupines because it's a weighted ball. So this might be appropriate for another species. We could put food in it or just give it to them as something to sort of explore and roll around and uh, use those activities. And then sometimes you might see uh, this kind of a contraption, which is a feeder. You might see this in the colobus monkey exhibit or even sometimes the gibbon exhibit, but any animal that has, or even some of our birds. So animals that use their beaks or their little hands to get their food might have something like this. Uh, we also, like Jen mentioned, have scent enrichment, which could be in the form of shavings, or <laughs> it could be a, some of our big cats really like the baking spices, so cinnamon, nutmeg, uh, cloves, they really like that. We might sprinkle that in their enrichment. Um, <laughs> I think Brian's holding up some Axe body spray. Uh, if you happen to receive perhaps some Axe body spray or a perfume you don't care for, uh, a lot of our animals like those scents. Or even let's think about our black bears, Smokey and Bubba. Two of their favorite things are smears of either peanut butter or honey around their exhibit to get them to kind of hunt for those smells, and then they get a tasty treat when they find them. Awesome, so we had a couple more questions come through, so we'll take a few more before we run out of time. Um, Tiffany was wondering, again, with the food, do they like to eat anything else? <laughs> well, we have seen basically <laughs> Shadow spending exclusively his time with the sweet potatoes. They do like the lettuces, the greens that they get. So we give them all different kinds of greens, collards, romaine, <laughs> kale, kale, uh, kale. I also tend to work, I have worked in the commissary. Kale is a big seller amongst a lot of our animals here. Uh, but his first and foremost love is sweet potato. So he'll basically exhaust the sweet potato supply before he will eat something else. Prickles is a little bit more adventurous well, not right now, but she will tend to go for the apple. She really likes apples, and she really likes greens. Shadow's more of just kind of a, a one-note guy. <laughs> and Sharon was wondering, are porcupines good swimmers? Oh, I actually don't know the answer to that question. Brian, do you have any idea? I haven't heard of any reports of them swimming. Um, that is a fantastic question, and I believe you've stumped everyone in this exhibit. Um, I can't imagine they're great swimmers. I don't think it's something they would do too often, given their tendency to spend most of their time in the trees. But they do live in South America, and it's often found in rainforests. There's often a lot of bodies of water and rivers there. I would imagine that they probably can swim when needed. Um, but they don't have very many adaptations that lend me to believe that they're great swimmers. They don't have a big thick tail like a beaver would. They don't have any webbed feet. Um, but that is a fantastic question. We will have to do more research and get back to you on that one. Um, you have absolutely stumped us. <laughs> That is a fantastic question, Colin. So both of the porcupines you see in here are fully grown, so they're not going to get too much bigger unless we keep feeding Shadow too many sweet potatoes. He might get a little bit rounder. Um, but they're not going to get any bigger. They each weigh around, I think it's about 10 to 12 pounds or somewhere in that ballpark. Um, I believe Prickles is a little bit larger than Shadow is, um, so she might weigh closer to maybe 13 or 14, but Shadow's right around that 10 to 12 range. Awesome. I think that is all the time we have with our porcupines today. I want to thank you guys all for tuning in with us. Thank you, Allison and Jen, for your fantastic work. And thank you, Shadow and Prickles, for being such superstars. Have a great day, everybody, and be sure to come visit our prehensile tail porcupines any day at the Stone Zoo.